the reality is the world is changing, isn't it? So the digital connectivity is getting everywhere, digital transformation is being uh, applied across every single workplace. So we need to adapt to that need. So expectations are rising for consumers that they want coverage everywhere around the UK, not just in the main cities, but the rural areas as well. But as well, enterprises want to use connectivity in many new ways. So we need to adapt to that world, and that's what we're doing through our regulation. What we do is we have a range of priorities. The number one priority, everything we do is focused on our consumers and citizens in the UK, and also, of course, the stakeholders in the industry. So <coughs> we want to make sure that there's universality of service across the whole of the UK. Um, and what that really means is in some areas uh, there's not enough commercial incentive to reach the really difficult to reach areas. So in the rural areas we engage with the local communities and try and find out, find out what's the best way to improve connectivity. And for example, the uh, current uh, consultation we're doing on the uh, spectrum auction uh, for 700 megahertz and the rest of the mid-band for 5G with coverage obligations is a big part of that. So that's for the rural areas. We also try and um, help the government to understand what are the new technological innovations that can improve connectivity across roads and railways in the rural areas in particular. So those are kind of areas for the, for the, of our interaction which is much more, I would say, hands-on in the rural areas where competition itself can't solve the problems. However, in the main cities and the urban areas of the UK, there's a very strong competition, there's very strong investment. The MNOs now are, are launching 5G as we've heard today. We have one network launched, another one launching next month, another one the month after that. And at the same time, across all of that, security and resilience of networks is absolutely key because none of the, none of the business cases for 5G will ever work if people don't trust the networks. So we want to make sure that whatever we do there and whatever companies and stakeholders do is done in a way where security and resilience is embedded by design up front. The 3.8 to 4.2, it's interesting that here it's caused quite a bit of a buzz because it's not something new. We actually started our consultation on our proposals back in December, which ran for, I think it was two or three months. We got a lot of interest around that. We got a lot of feedback. It could be in the future that you have you know, dozens or hundreds of uh, operators, uh, service providers uh, on 5G networks and other types of connectivity uh, in a couple of years. Um, our concern is that you know, the supply chain has been very restricted and there's not enough global suppliers out there. Part of that is that um, the operators have, let's say, a lot of needs that are specific to the large scale rollouts. And, um, and so there hasn't been a lot of choice there. And it's very difficult for a new startup to come out, even with the backing of a, a spin out from a university, for example, um, to, to actually get a relationship with an operator. Because um, they can be quite conservative in that field. They've got a lot of millions of customers that they, that they worry about, which is you know, understandable. However, by allowing these smaller players, smaller systems, smaller networks with it, who can manage their own risk, uh, but actually can secure that risk through various means of security in a standardized way and dipping into a global ecosystem, which is being pushed by for the 5G standards, allowing them to, um, to actually have a wider choice of who they deploy you know, in a controlled manner, uh, that's a huge market for a startup and actually there's a much better chance that some of those startups can get an anchor customer and then if they do a really good job, they'll get more customers. And I think that's fantastic. That's going to be groundbreaking because today you've got a very small range of customers and it's a big risk to actually put a lot of investment for a new startup and try and break in. Whereas now we'll have a much more a wider range of customers, which means we should see a more diversity of the ecosystem, which is good for everybody. It's a really exciting time because we're not necessarily everybody fighting over the same things. We're not fighting over the scraps of a Sunday dinner. Uh, there's opportunity for everybody because the digital transformation universe is going gonna, is gonna to go right across all industries. So that expansion will give space for the operators, it will give space for third uh, parties, it will give space for you know, research institutions to produce startups. And, um, and so I think really it would be good if everybody just sees the fact that, uh, that there's no real reason to fight over your piece of the pie, but that the more you collaborate uh, with a clear vision of where you want to go, you can get a bigger slice of the pie. So I'm hoping that we'll see what we've already seen in the last year, working together with DCMS in the UK and the UK 5G organization, collaboration across a range of trials with government funding, with Ofcom involved, with the operators involved, with the researchers, with the local authorities involved. That framework, I think, is a really good building block for the future, and I'd like to see more collaboration of that type, because I think the bigger picture is that there's room for everybody.